JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for May the 11th. I am Harald Ambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, mixed against the other G10 currencies on Monday and during the Asian session Tuesday. It gained against NOC, SEC, AUD, NZD, and the Euro in that order, while it lost ground versus uh, the pound, the Canadian dollar, and uh, CHF. The greenback uh, was found virtually unchanged against uh, the Japanese yen. Although the, performance, although the performance in the FX sphere paints a blurry picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, the weakening of the risk-linked Aussie and Kiwi suggests that there may have been a setback in investors' uh, morale. Indeed, turning our gaze to the equity world, we see that although EU shares have finished their session unchanged or slightly higher, the US ones uh, tumbled with the Nasdaq losing the most. The subdued appetite rolled over into the Asian session today, today as well. Now, with, um, with no clear trigger behind the switch in market participants, uh, would we believe uh, that they may have started getting nervous ahead of, um, ahead of tomorrow's uh, US inflation data? Expectations are for the headline rate to have surged, but for the core one to have increased as well, which means that the rally in headline inflation may not be due to transitory effects uh, after all. With that in mind, investors may have already started speculating that the Fed should start considering withdrawing monetary policy support sooner than previously assumed. If indeed both inflation rates uh, should higher, uh, equities and, um, and other risk-linked assets uh, may continue correcting lower, but we wouldn't see this as a game-changer rather than just a corrective phase. With Friday's employment report disappointing, we believe that Fed, Fed officials may not uh, be in a rush to alter their policy anytime soon. We have several of them speaking this week, and if they maintain the view that uh, policy normalization is not uh, the, on the discussion table yet, equities and other risk-linked assets may rebound in the aftermath of the data, while the US dollar and other safe havens like the Japanese yen may come under renewed selling interest. Now, as uh, for uh, today's events, during the, Euro during, during the European session, we have Germany's ZW survey for May. The current conditions index is expected to have increased to minus 42.6 from minus 48.8, while the economic sentiment one is forecast to have risen fractionally to 71 from 70.7. Following the improvement in the PMIs around the Eurozone in the last months, uh, this will confirm that the bloc's uh, growth engine continues to recover from the damages of the coronavirus pandemic. At uh, the latest ECB gathering, officials kept their policy unchanged and did not discuss plans for their bond purchases, but given that at the next meeting we will uh, also get new staff macroeconomic projections, we may also get hints with regards to the bank's uh, future plans. Now, with the recovery underway, officials may provide clues as to whether and when they tend to reduce uh, the pace of their quantitative easing uh, program. Later in the day, the U.S. jolts job openings for March are coming out, and the forecast points to a small acceleration to 7.500 million from 7.367 million in February. 
As for the speakers, we have several on today's agenda, and those are Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey, New York Fed President John Williams, Atlanta Fed President Raphael Bostic, Philadelphia Fed President Patrick Harker, and San Antonio Fed President, Fed President Mary Daly. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.